The weather pattern for much of the USA seems to be stuck with warmer than average temperatures, and that will continue towards next week, but with a twist, the fact that the jet stream is going to be cutting into the central US. This means we'll have some storms to track, and I've got all the details on where you could see some precipitation towards our Halloween week, plus where temperatures are going to be at their warmest. One nation weather. To start this video, I'm going to overview the next 7 to 10 days of weather using the mid-level pattern about 15 to 20,000 feet on up into the atmosphere with the European model because what goes on here, as I state in pretty much every video, really does dictate what goes on down at the surface. And as we go into the end of this week, the map looks pretty bland. We've got some yellowish orange shades pretty much anywhere from California all the way up to the northeast U.S. and places like Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont. These yellows and oranges indicate the ridging, and ridging has been a big part of the pattern if you've been watching my videos for the last couple of weeks. Ridging indicates the jet stream being pushed further north and therefore warmer than average conditions being more likely to move into a lot of the country. Ridging is going to continue even as we go towards next week for a lot of the nation's midsection and the east, but there is going to be a very brief blip in that as we see a front and an associated low pressure system move through going through our Friday into Saturday and Sunday of this upcoming weekend if you want to consider Friday weekend day as well. Moving out of the upper Midwest into the Great lakes and northeast we will see a very brief front with isolated showers and storms as well as a very brief cool down behind it moving through that is not disrupting the general pattern across the united states which has continued to be ridging and will continue to be that as we go to the end of this weekend look at this as we go towards our sunday october 27th of 2024 into the afternoon and evening hours Warmer than average conditions building up with an anomalous ridge, yet another one of these. This is probably at least the third or fourth one of the month of October, building up with warmer than average temperatures. But obviously I've mentioned that the pattern is going to get active as we go towards next week, and that's going to begin to occur as we see this warmer air build across the central U.S. You notice some of those blues. That indicates a trough in the west. Troughs indicate some lower pressure and the associated dip in the jet stream that brings cooler air with it. Notice all of that, even some greenish shades showing up there towards California, Nevada, and Idaho. That means we're we're going to see some quite chilly air, 10, 15, 20 degree below average temperatures for this time of the year going into the early part of next week there. But as we're still warm in the eastern half of the country, really anywhere from the nation's midsection through the plains eastward, we're going to see kind of a roller coaster zone of weather get going anywhere from the south central plains up through the north central plains and into the Midwest and Great Lakes. The jet stream is almost certainly going to be cutting through these areas where I just put the black lines on screen. And as it does so, we're going to see a lot more storminess more than likely into the nation's midsection. So I really hope that these mid-level pattern graphics kind of help you visualize what's really going on and how that's going to affect what's going on throughout the rest of this video as I discuss temperatures and precipitation. Make sure you're leaving a comment down below to let me know about that, but also make sure down below in the description of this video you're checking out the free trial link to get the weather model maps that I use from WeatherBell for yourself. And of course, down below, one other quick reminder before we get back into the video, I deliver consistent, accurate, and educational forecasts right here on the channel. And if you'd like to help me get towards my next milestone of subscribers, which is 6,000, make sure you're hitting that button down below and turning on those notifications. Now we're getting into the future radar using the European model, tracking out not only the next few days as overall they're going to be a little bit quieter, but also further down the road when things get active into next week. Of course, the next few days are going to be on that quieter side because of that ridging I just showed you, so that's why I show that mid-level pattern map at the start of the video. There is a little bit of a system cutting through that ridge. This is that one that's going to bring the cooler air through the Great Lakes into the northeast into the start of this weekend. There was that little bit of blue I mentioned a couple minutes ago. Here it is, just in the form of precipitation. You can see these showers and storms. We've got a little bit of a chance of some rainfall, especially late Thursday going into our Thursday night across parts of the Midwest. We could even see a few hailstones and some gustier winds as these push through, particularly places like northern Missouri, Iowa, Western Illinois, southwestern Wisconsin, and southeast Michigan Thursday night going into early Friday. So we'll have to track that little appendage there of some energy working its way on through. But as quickly as it forms up, this thing is weakening on down, going towards our Friday, October 25th of 2024 from Missouri on over to the Ohio River Valley and then up towards parts of Michigan. Hard to find a drop of rain along that front here as we're just going to see very isolated shower coverage. By Saturday, that front is off the East Coast. We see a little bit of a cool down Saturday into Saturday night once again here over parts of the East as I've been mentioning and a lot of the country is dry at this point, things are going to begin to change as we go out of this Sunday and then towards next Monday into our Monday, October 28th. We're now five days out from when I'm filming this video, so confidence isn't 100% on this, but generally it looks like we're going to be looking at some rainfall as well as some higher elevation snowfall moving through our typical troublemaking spots of the West for this time of the year into our Monday evening from Washington and Oregon and Eastern California, moving all the way through the Rockies here and into parts of Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. We will have some of that precipitation to track. Nothing looking too heavy, but we could see at least a gustier breeze along with this activity. 
Monday going into Monday night, as well as continuing into our Tuesday the further east you go. And in fact, going into our late Tuesday, heading into our early Wednesday, October 30th, that is when this model, the European model, picks up on that jet stream that's going to be beginning to pick up in its intensity over the central United States, firing up a pretty strong low pressure system that gets going out of the Rockies. That's a 997 millibar low. That's equivalent to what you would see with, say, a tropical storm off the east coast. Here we are with it forming pretty heavy rainfall in parts of Nebraska, South Dakota, as well as moving over into Minnesota, at least according to this depiction. Heavy snowfall could also be possible with this system behind where that jet stream dip is and back towards parts of Wyoming into western Colorado and into northeastern parts of Utah. Do not trust for this system to look exactly like this as we go towards the middle of next week, but overall, Tuesday into Wednesday, we'll probably have a lot of activity coming out of the Rockies and of the Plains. By the time we go out of our Wednesday and into our Thursday, Thursday being October 31st, you know what day that is, especially Especially if you are going to be trick-or-treating out there. Trick-or-treating day, Halloween, all across the country, we could have a chance of some rainfall, particularly coming out of the central U.S. and moving towards the Mississippi and Ohio Valley regions. Of course, bad timing, right? We want to relieve a drought, but I know a lot of people don't really want that to happen on specifically Halloween day. That might be how it shapes up, though, and we could have yet another storm behind it, as the European model is indicating. We're going to continue with the ridging in the east, the troughing in the west, and the moisture building up between those two areas as the jet stream cuts on through. Flooding could eventually become a problem if we could see prolonged rounds of rain and storms. The best chance for storms in the next 7 to 10 days definitely there in the central U.S. heading into the Midwest. Now discussing the temperature anomaly side of things, I'm going to break down on our October 24th, the 26th, going through the 28th and the 30th, so that you get the next seven days and how this ridge is going to continue to build in the central and eastern zones. You can see here in the near term, we've already got a lot of warmer air, 10 to 15 to even 20 degrees above average, anywhere from the South Dakota and Minnesota region, all the way down to Texas and Louisiana as we go into our tomorrow, which is Thursday. By the time we jump through our Friday and into our Saturday, October 26th, you can see that very brief front bringing the cool down up there into the Great Lakes and Northeast. And what I mean by cool down is temperatures near average to start this weekend. The next ridge, though, already beginning back towards California, Nevada, Utah, parts of Arizona, and then further up into the Mountain West as well. And then by the time we go into the start of next week on Monday, you can easily see how we're seeing the ridging build in the central U.S. And eventually the cooler is going to start banking up against it from the west. Temperatures from Texas to Oklahoma, from Kansas to Nebraska, from South to North Dakota, anywhere from around 15 to 25, maybe even pushing 30 degrees above average, even though I don't have that on the graphic here. As we go into the early part of next week, the Midwest, even around 10 degrees above normal. And it just continues with that ridge just dominating the eastern and central U.S. as we go towards the Tuesday, Wednesday time frame of next week. The cooler now really banking up on against it from the west. Remember, this is around when that system is forming with the low, pretty strong and of tropical storm caliber in terms of its pressure there in the central. US. Temperatures 15 to 20 degrees above average out ahead of it, more like 10 to 15 degrees below average behind it. And let's see how that goes. Using the National Digital Forecast Database high temperature tracking, we're going to go through the next five to seven days of afternoon highs as well as morning lows so that you know exactly what those anomalies I just showed you actually pan out to be in terms of numbers. Here we go into our Thursday, October 24th. That's tomorrow. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s to start the day across a lot of the southern U.S. More like 30s and some 40s in the mix for a lot of the northern corridor. Obviously, find your community on the map. You know where you are. Hopefully, anyway, as we go through the next several days, tracking as we go into our Thursday, zooming in on this specific area, you can see why. Temperatures, as I mentioned earlier, are expected to be 15, 20, even 25 degrees above normal in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas on our Thursday. And these temperatures around 90 to 95 degrees from Dallas to Oklahoma, steady back on over towards Amarillo. These are going to be record-breaking. If you see those boxes, they are expected to reach record maximum highs, meaning the temperature has never peaked this high before on October 24th since records have been kept. And you know, in a lot of places, that goes 100-plus years of records. Back into the books. Here we go into our Friday morning. The continued warmth from this near-term ridge. This is just ridge number one, technically, the next several days. Keeping things around 50 to 60 across a lot of the nation's midsection to start the day. Warming up into the afternoon. Not only do the 80s and 90s down here towards places like Texas and Oklahoma, as well as with records over towards Mississippi and Alabama, but I also want to point out the fact that we're seeing plenty of mid and upper 70s pushing as far north as central parts of Missouri, south central areas of Illinois, Indiana. We've got southwest Ohio and a lot of Kentucky getting into the 70s and even places like Paducah, Kentucky getting well into the 80s on our Friday afternoon. I'm not going to be spending too, mi too much time on the morning hours just because, you know, they don't affect as many people as the sunlight hours do. But we've got some 30s up here through the north central U.S. Saturday morning, some 50s and 60s in that warmer pocket further south. But I want you to notice as we go into this weekend, we're going to see that warmer pocket in the south begin to expand back north like we've been seeing with a lot of the recent ridges. 
Here's that near-term front, though. I mentioned it with the mid-level pattern side of things as we've got that brief piece of energy cutting through the Midwest Thursday going into Friday and then off the East Coast with very little precip with it by the time we go towards our Saturday. Sunday behind it, highs in the 50s from parts of Minneapolis, Minnesota, all the way in over here towards Caribou, Maine. It is going to be a pretty cool day or at least mild by this time of year's standards for our Saturday afternoon. And we're going to be seeing 30s as you wake up into our Sunday morning over a lot of this region, even some 20s. Definitely be prepared for a frost and freeze if you are not already in a lot of the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and Northeast because of this brief front going into our Sunday morning. But here we go, going out of our Sunday morning and into our Sunday afternoon. Now, if you live in the nation's midsection, you're really going to begin to see those warmer temperatures that are going to last through a lot of next week out ahead of the jet stream. Already seeing plenty of 80s and 90s down towards the U.S.-Mexico border. And we've got temperatures near 80 pushing on up through eastern and central parts of Colorado. 80 in a lot of Kansas, 75-ish in a lot of Nebraska. Skipping through our Monday morning and into our Monday afternoon, the warmth just continues to expand with this next ridge, and this is going to be one of the most expansive ridges, as I've been saying, of October. 77 degrees on the Nebraska-South Dakota line at the end of October. We could be seeing snow in these areas. That's probably more common than seeing 77 this time of the year in those areas into our Monday here we go, you know, 70 in a place like Minneapolis Monday afternoon. Same goes over towards like Chicago and Milwaukee or at least some mid to upper 60s there. And the warmth bubble will just only continue to expand. Here we go out of our Monday afternoon and into our Tuesday morning. We have got 50s and 60s for morning temperatures all the way up into south central parts of Minnesota and southwest Wisconsin. This is crazy. This is what that strong jet stream flow in the atmosphere really helps in bringing down here at the surface. Record warm morning lows from Oklahoma all the way up into Minnesota for our Tuesday morning. And places like Des Moines, Iowa, you'll be waking up to a 65 degree, if this holds, morning low Tuesday morning. Meanwhile, back behind this cold front that's going to be bringing up that warmer with the southerly flow ahead of it, we've got 20s and even some teens with higher elevation there. Back into the Mountain West, there will be a cool breeze kind of blowing in along that boundary between it. The western part of Nebraska, a lot colder than the eastern part of it. Omaha near 80, while back in the northwestern part of Nebraska near 50 for our Tuesday afternoon highs. Crazy stuff, but I guess that's what you get in fall, right? And of course, I'm here for the highs and lows of fall. In terms of temperatures and precipitation, of course, I'll be ironing out that next storm more in my next video. If you want more consistent, accurate, and educational updates in the future, make sure you're subscribed and turning on those notifications. I am intending for my next update to be on Friday, so I hope to see you then. One Nation Weather.